Hello everyone, my name is Mike or MTashed and today we're going to be looking at my setup. We're going to be looking at uh, my controller scheme, some of the weapons I use, my classes. And let's just jump into it. So I use default. I find default is just the best for me. Um, other players, K uh, KJ Hopi uses jumper, but because of the lack of accuracy you get when you're jumping, I just don't find it really worth it for me to switch or to change up at this point, considering I have so many games played on default. If you are good with default, don't worry too too much about the slight advantage that Jumper gives. I work on a non-inverted game setup. I, I don't like using inverted. That's only for flying games. And I use a, um, a look sensitivity of 4. So between 4 and like 2 to 5 are kind of the best range for most players. The only time I'd ever recommend going to like a 10 would, if you, would be if you're like a blink shotgun pro because it does help you spin around faster. But if you like to snipe or you want to play similar to myself, um, I would go between 3 and 4. 3 is what Hovi plays on, 4 is what I play on, and, and something like a 10 is just overkill and not really worth it. For my hunter, I've got pretty balanced stats. It gives me enough intellect and discipline for lots of grenades, lots of supers, but it's not fully optimized, but good enough. Um, Acleophage Symbiote is the best uh, for golden gun. It gives you that extra golden gun shot. It's got some nice discipline on it. Mask of the Third Man I use if I am blade dancing, because I haven't taken the time to level up Lucky Raspberry or anything. Um, most of the stuff, it doesn't really matter for me. I just like to play, and guns are more important, so one of my big things is last word with perfect balance. Um, you use aggressive ballistics for the extra damage. It's a four-shot body shot with ADS, and um, last word is probably my favorite hand cannon to use. It just feels so great out playing people that uh, when you're hip firing and stuff like that. I, I really do love last word, and I feel it's one of the most competitive uh, hand cannons in the game. Hawk Moon, good old trusty Hawk Moon, is fantastic, but they did nerf it, and it just isn't quite as good. If you got it, go with Hammer Forge and Aggressive Ballistics again, and it's pretty good overall. No Land Beyond? Nah, we're not going to talk about No Land Beyond. There's no point talking about No Land Beyond. It doesn't matter what you pick, it still sucks. With the Scholar, um, I do like the Scholar. It's a pretty fun gun. I use Send It for the extra aim assist at a range. Um, if I'm not using a uh, exotic primary, which I do most of the time, Scholar is very fun to play with. Feels pretty strong. Now, I've got an LDR. Um, it's not as good as my Supremacy that I'll show you later, but I've got an LDR. This is the base one you could buy. It's pretty darn good. I'm a big fan of it. I've got a Matador that I've got. Um, this one has Army of One. My other one has Final Round. And this one I have a lot of success with. It's got a pretty darn good roll, and it's a one-shot machine at pretty much any range. So um, as long as you're aiming this at someone, they're going to die <laughs> from a mile away. Uh, I've got an icebreaker for ammo glitches, so if you run out of ammo in PvP, something like a Trials game, you can switch to your icebreaker, let it get the six shots in the magazine, and once you die, you can switch to a different sniper. This gives you all your ammo back, like full magazine, and it's, it's really effective. Uh, I've got a Praetor's Revenge in here, some low-grade humilities, which are pretty good as well. Um, but for the most part, I just use LDR and Supremacy now. The lower impact stuff is, is good. They've got some pretty good stats and all that, but they just don't cut it when you play a lot of Trials and Skirmish because you can't one-hit off the revive. Um, if you do, however, get a Praetis Revenge or a low-grade Humility and you don't have an LDR or Benevolence, go for it. They're pretty good. I've got a Dream Waker on here, but I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Truth, Galhorn, all that stuff doesn't really matter because... I don't use it in PvP much. So Rangefinder, Injection Mold, and Counterbalance on this BTRD. This thing is a monster. You can just decimate people. It's like a amped up Yolder's Hammer. I'm a big fan of it. Pretty much it. Let's just jump into the subclasses and what I pick for my hunters. So with the, uh, the trusty old Gunslinger, um, I use a setup that's a little bit different than some people. Some people like to use the extra accuracy in that last skill tree there, but... Uh, I go for the Gambler's Dagger just because I use lots of throwing knives. Um, I throw tons of throwing knives, actually. I spec into recovery and agility for the most part because it's just really strong. I use Keyhole most of the time. Um, knife Juggler is great for getting the, uh, the headshots, but realistically, Incendiary Blade with Gambler's Dagger is more than you would ever need. I usually... Um, we'll switch between the two, but um, Incendiary Blade for the most part is the pick to go with because it gives you bonus damage. If you hit him in the body with it, it does a ton of damage still, so I'd go with Incendiary Blade, especially if you're using it in panic situations and not using it too, too aggressively. 
Um, as for the next perk, use the, the bottom perk here, uh, Gunfighter. It just, it gives you 30% or 30, 30 seconds off of your cooldown for Golden Gun, and that's just necessary. You gotta do it. This, it's too good not to uh, use. For the jumps, I like better control just for the jukes. The, uh, the movement it gives you is pretty awesome. And triple jump and higher jump are meh, not great. Trip mine is for zoning people, and all around the other grenades kind of suck. Now, for the Blade Dancer, I use Hungering Blade um, for PvP just because it, it helps you heal. Encore doesn't really help you that that much in lots of situations. Stalker, I'll take that in PvE, but for the most part, yeah, Hungering Blade is the way to go. I do a pretty balanced uh, spec on the Blade Dancer. Um, I like being a little bit faster on the Blade Dancer. Quick Draw is the also the big perk because it's so broken. Uh, it is so, so strong, especially if you blink shotgun and you, you miss and don't kill them. Backstab is kind of broken right now too because you can one hit people from the front, but fast twitch is okay too because it, it does reduce the cooldown of your melee. Um, Showstopper, Vanish, it doesn't really matter what you pick for this. They're, for the most part, not used a ton unless it's a very, very um, specific situation. Blink, you gotta learn Blink, gotta learn Blink, it's so so strong, aggressive and defensive. And then, um, for the, the grenade, Arc Bolt is definitely the way to go. I kinda suck with them, I, I miss a lot of my, my Arc Bolts, but some of the other stuff, like the other nades are just, they're, they're too average, so go with Arc Bolt because it is very very strong overall, you can get a lot of kills with it. Um, now on to the Warlock. Onto the Sun Singer, more likely because I play 90% of my games as a as a Sun Singer. I've got the Ram for the extra tankiness, so this allows you to hit, uh, like get hit twice in the head with a thorn and you won't die. It allows you to take a thorn and an arc bolt grenade. It's really really strong. Um, probably one of the best exotics in the game at this moment because of how tanky it makes you, and uh, it's just OP. You you need to get a Ram if you can. I spent 11 engrams getting this thing. Um. I have the Obsidian Mine, but I don't. It's not that effective for the most part um, for when you're using Void Walker. So um, the, the only other big one is the Heart of the Praxic Fire because it gives you like 13 grenades when you're in your Sunsinger Super. So that's a pretty damn good exotic, um, as long as you have some good uh, intellect and and uh, grenade energy. You're you're pretty good to go for stats with a Warlock. I don't really care that much though. I'm I'm kind of a uh, lazy, so I take Touch of Flame. <clears throat> and uh, Viking Funeral, as well as the Firebolt Grenade. So what that ha what that does is it, it gives you the ability to do pretty much 170 damage with one grenade on someone. So you need to body shot someone and they're going to die. It's very, very strong. I spec into um, this most of the time. It's just too good to not do. I get maxed armor just to synergy with the ram. I usually go with flame shield because it just makes you tankier. And normally I'll take radiant skin and only take fireborn in something like trials of Osiris. Um, focus burst is pretty good because it gives you a little bit of speed. You can kind of keep jumping and gliding and you get a little bit of speed boosts to get across the map and it can definitely help you. But for the most part, the thing to do with a, a sun singer is just get tanky, get super, super tanky. Um, for weapons, uh, final boss is one of the snipers I have, but the Matador is on here. Um, that's a pretty good shotgun. That's just like a better roll of the other one, in my opinion, because it's got the final round, and you can juggle the final round and do a ton of damage. Um, <clears throat> Thorn is the only, well, other than Mida, Thorn is kind of the only other big item on the list. Everyone's got a Thorn, I'm pretty sure. Make sure you've got Send It. And But Mida is really fun too, especially on my Sunsinger build, because it gives you some pretty good speed and good strafing. Um, but Mida is stronger with uh, with hunters, in my opinion. So this Ash Factory, though, is is one of my beauties. It's got a clown cartridge. So sometimes, if you get lucky, you get five to six rockets from one heavy spawn. It's got hard launch. It's got javelin, and this thing is is a PVP monster. I'm a big fan of this thing. Um, I actually have another one on my Titan, and it's really good. I, I think it's actually better than this one, just because of the the, the rolls on it. And I'll show you that in a minute. So before I forget, let's get into the Void Walker. I don't use it a ton, but here we go. I've got the Vortex Mastery. This is going to make your Axion Bolts better, make your... It's just all around good. I spec for Recovery and Agility. Armor, I don't really care about. Annihilate is good for your grenades and everything. Um, but yeah, I just I, I like to have the Recovery. 
Um, the melee on Voidwalker, it doesn't really matter that much. I take the one that reduces your cooldown on your super, because why not? You might as well have some super cooldown. And then I take Shatter just because all the other ones I find I suck with. I, I can't land shots with the others. Blink, as I said before, learn it, love it, get better with Blink. You need to. It's just so, so, so good. And then Axion Bolt is probably the, one of the best grenades in the game because it chases and forces people out of their hidey holes, and it's, it's very, very good. So let's jump, uh, let's jump on the Titan now. So with the Titan, I've got another last word that I've got leveled up, which is very sexy. My gear is pretty average. I've got some pretty balanced stats. I've got some armor from the beginning uh, before even Dark Below. So this is some vanilla armor that I find is so sexy. Probably some of the best looking armor in the game. My boots are meh, whatever. As long as it's got heavy ammo, I'm happy. Um, but I just, I, I've never paid a lot of attention to the stats. It's just, I'm too lazy to re-level gear just to have more strength or more intellect, etc, etc. I've got some exotics on the Titan, but I, I for the most part, don't actually level them because I'm A, I'm lazy, and B, I just don't think they're worth it. I, I don't know, I really like Helm of Inmost Light. I think it's one of the best helmets for PvP in the game. Um... I've got the, the Defender one too, which is obviously it's very good for the blind and the bubble, but I don't play Defender very much unless it's PvE, so the Helm of Inmost Light is the way to go, just because it gives you two perks. It's it's a massive, massive boost to your uh, character, because perks, getting perks is way better than just like a little increase here and there. Perks matter, and and so the fact you get two is huge. So I've got, I got my last word. My Red Death is the only other thing that's really cool. It's still not even leveled up all the way, but it's got the perks for PvP. Uh, this sniper, though, the Supremacy, I actually did a whole video on it. This thing is amazing. With, uh, with life support, you get the uh, increased reload speed. You get ammo once you've taken damage. It's just so, so strong. If you take a Thorn Shot to the head, you're going to get some extra ammo, and it's really broken. Um, it's got 12 shots. Uh, in reserve once you start and with performance bonus every one or two sometimes three kills you get extra ammo in the magazine or, or sorry in the reserve so you can go an entire game without having to get ammo that's pretty broken short gaze because it's uh, the best scope that i have on that thing luckily it has it but let's get into the ash factory here so this is my favorite role it's got javelin it's got tripod uh hard launch and it's got the um it's got the horseshoes and grenades so that's a really good rocket launcher Striker Titan, um, I have Shoulder Charge on here, but I die so much. I'm going to switch probably to Unstoppable. It gives you a little bit more armor, and um, you can survive some really clutch situations if you use it smartly. I die more than get kills when I use Shoulder Charge, so um, I spec for armor and recovery. Just because of the way I play Titan, I don't rush in all the time and use Shoulder Charge. I, for the most part, just stay back. So I'd rather have the armor and the recovery. Agility is meh. And the reason I don't take it is because it, it reduces your recovery so, so much to get that agility. It's just not worth it for me. Um, Storm Fist, again, it, it doesn't really matter because it's it's not that important. But what I was saying before about the, the perks, why it's so big. So because my helmet gives me the other one, I'm allowed to take Aftershock. So my grenades last forever. My... My Fist of Havoc, the, the Aftermath, lasts forever, so it's really, really strong. Um, amplify, who cares? Aftermath, that's the, the perk I take because it, it synergies well with the other thing, and I'm able to take Death from Above with my helmet. So I've got two free perks here, so I can make my Titan just overall way, way stronger by using the Helm of Inmost Light. I, I'm a very big fan. Catapult I take because you can Titan Skate, so that means you jump in the air, do your burst, jump in the air, do your burst, and you can really get around the map quickly. And then lightning grenades because they last for fucking ever, and you can really zone enemies with it. So I'm a big fan of the lightning grenade. It's probably one of the best grenades in the game for zoning. For defender, honestly, I don't play it much. If you're curious about a defender, go look up uh, True Vanguard's video because he just knows way more than me about it. I don't even know if I have optimized perks for PvP on it because for the most part, when I use it, I just do PvE. Um, yeah, there's not, not a lot to say, unfortunately, about the, the this guy here. I don't know which grenades to really use or anything other than Magnetic Grenade, I think, is good. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. Everyone's been asking about my stuff, so I figured I would share with you finally. And uh, hopefully this enlightened you a little bit about my play. So, talk to you later, my friends. Bye-bye.